battle for cash. This is the Independence Monument. But how many of us Ugandans have bothered to ever find out the significance of this monument? Tourism contributes to poverty alleviation through job creation, encourages entrepreneurship and promotes social cohesion. Tourism is a key economic driver in the country and domestic tourism will play a critical role in the tourism sector as it has potential to generate more than a half the internal tourism revenue. The government through the Uganda Tourism Board understands this potential and has embarked on campaigns with a view of educating and familiarizing the locals about the importance of tourism in a society as well as the current and future plans of our tourism industry. This is in hopes of creating a desire in the locals to visit these fascinating features and picturesque locations. But how much knowledge do our contestants have of the tourism that surrounds them? It's time to find out. First, it's Cotilda of Kawempe Police Women Poultry Group. They've come a long way and are hanging on by a thread, but their zeal is unmatched. I love your attire. You've gone African, not the uniform. Imagine we are tourists and you need to sell either, I don't know what you, whatever you're selling, but it's tourism. You need to convince us to come to that place that you're selling. Uh, we are presenting the unique features in the central region, which are marketable for tourism. Uganda region is endowed with a very wonderful meal sauce called the Luombo. Mm -hmm. Luombo is a very aromatic sauce prepared in, um, in banana leaves. Eh? You get, uh, uh, okay, it can be chicken, fish, meat wrapped in, a, in a banana leaves and steamed on food. I tell you, it makes a very nice aroma. And once you eat it, you love it for the rest of your life. And we wish that you should come to Uganda or to Central Region and enjoy this type of meal. It's very nice and, and delicious. We also have the matoke, we have the ndagu. Those are the foods we prepare in Uganda and are so delicious, so good to enjoy. Then we have the Rolex, also one of the foods which uh, is coming on as a part of uh, the best foods in Uganda. We have the Wildlife Center at Entebbe. This wildlife center provides a, a, a various species of uh, animals, birds, reptiles like the snakes, uh, like the giraffes. All these animals are found there. These are the ostriches found there. These are chimpanzees, the lions, the rhinos, crocodiles and the like which are found in that place. And we have the Sezibwa Falls in Mkono along Jinja Highway. This is also a wonder in the central region. You know when you reach there, these falls, you see a stumbling flow of the water on the, on the rocks. It's very wonderful. You find the, it forming. And the, and the uniqueness in it is that uh, there's a cave along where the falls are too heavy. And it's believed that when you go in that cave and you come back alive, then you are going to be the richest person on this earth. You have the fortune. That is the cultural site for Uganda, which is so good. And when you reach it, you like. Can I hear from your colleague? I need you to tell me a story about one thing in the central region that would make me think about it, meditate about it, get obsessed about it, and would want to come and see it. But in a story form, not presentation form, in a story form. The dance. I can tell a story about the dance. The dance. Please tell me about it. Uh, a Buganda dance. Mm -hmm. They have a very lovely dance of which their dance are of several, several types. I may not be able to mention their names, but I see they, they, they use their legs, their feet when they are dancing. Mm -hmm. they use their can feet. I be able to see that? They use their feet when they are dancing, mm -hmm. and they use their hands, mm -hmm. and that is how they twist the, the waist. Mm -hmm. And it's very lovely with the, the thing they tie around their, their waist. Mm -hmm. It looks very nicely, 
and really that one, if you look at it, you will like to see it all the time and come to see it again and again. And those, that dance communicates. That is when it is for traditional say, ceremony like uh, uh, weddings or introduction, it communicates such that the, the onlookers, they can see and sense. Some of it is a bit educational in that when they are dancing, you see them, you know, touch some part meaning that <laughs> when you, where you should do bathe, you know, and keep yourself clean. And it is really very uh, interesting. And when you look at it and their smile, you really love to come back and see this dance in Buganda region. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, talking about dancing, um, just for your information, like you said, in Central, people use their waist. In Northern Uganda, you're going to notice they use their head. Eh? In Southern Uganda, they're going to use their feet. The Bachiga use their feet. So people of Uganda, they tend to use the parts of the bodies where they come from. So it was an interesting one. But I expected that uh, being from police, right? You talk about the situated Kampala, how to also be safe in Kampala, but you didn't say anything. I think it would come in the, in the, in the reasons why you, the, the daughters are so many coming to Uganda. The reasons why they are coming to Uganda is because of the security, which is so tight, and the daughters are safe when they are in Uganda. That's why they feel like coming to Uganda all the time. And they have confessed that when they are in Uganda, they are safe. They move very well. No one is even attacking them. What is it? Um, I would just like to understand. Do you really think you have done Buganda? Um, you know, you've sold it the best way you can because Buganda is a very rich, you know, culture. It's actually exciting. Uh, when Anne called you out to show us how to dance, you danced. Don't you think you should have done that in the first place? Because you have so many nice things there, mm -hmm. but you're presenting them like, you know, it's just a by the way. Do you think you've done the best you could have done? Given time, we have done the best. If we go through all these slides, they have the best things. They, we have the other the six islands around Lake Victoria. We have uh, we have the types no, of for the few that you even presented. Yes, I've just given an example of the dance that you've just done for us. Don't you think you would have done better doing more practical things, showing us, exciting us, taking us along with you on this journey of Buganda? Because I come from, you know, the UK, I have no idea what happens in Uganda, in Buganda in particular. Do you really think you convinced me enough to feel like I must come and visit Buganda? I think we tried to convince you really to come to Uganda. Okay, um, I just want to make a comment and not a question. I, if I was to come to visit Uganda, specifically so Buganda, it is not what you tell me, it's how you make me feel. It was flat for me until when she actually danced and described Buganda dance. That is when I got convinced. I said, probably I can actually go and visit. Next are the engineers. Joseph, also selling the tourism in Buganda. I guess you know the, the task before you. You're going to promote to us the power of Africa. You wouldn't really want to miss seeing these people dance. That's a unique culture that you can only find in Wakiso. Wakiso is a pearl within the pearl of Africa. Wakiso has so many unique features that, can that are of interest to the tourist. Did you know about the matas, Uganda matas. It's only in Wakiso that you'll find the Namgongo Shrine, which has an intricate story about the Uganda matas. Did you know that we have one of the biggest lakes in Africa, freshwater lakes, that is Lake Victoria? Then how about the Ngamba Islands? The Ngamba Islands, which have the chimpanzee sanctuaries. We have Entebbe, which is the first capital of Uganda. But you will be amazed by the nightlife in Wakiso. Wakiso is one of the districts that doesn't go to sleep at night. You'll be amazed 
by the business that goes on in the nightclubs. It's so interesting. We have Entebbe International Airport. It's the hub and gateway to Uganda, only located in Wakiso, one of the kind, and the gateway to all other tourist sites. Wakiso is equipped with very good infrastructure, one of the kind, the recent one being Entebbe Express Highway. Then we have the fruits, the fish that we will not miss. Then don't forget about the new invasion, the Rolex, which can only be found in Wakiso. It's a true Ugandan creation. Accommodation is very cheap in Wakiso. If you're a tourist looking for a five-star hotel or a tourist using, looking for affordable accommodation, then Wakiso has it all. The financial services are liberalized with both international and local players. You will be amazed. We don't have any limitation on forex exchange. The current rate standing at the dollar is about 3,700. 3,780 UGX. While there, don't forget to visit DFCU to explore any investment opportunities in the country. We have the sports facility, Nambole, named after the appetite icon, Nelson Mandela. You wouldn't love to miss that one. The Entebbe Golf Club for golf lovers. Then we have the spacious gyms for that purpose, for those ones who want to enjoy the fitness centers. Are you aware that in Uganda we love bargaining? Bargaining is one of the cultures that we really love here while shopping. So if you're coming to Uganda, honestly, you need to practice some bargaining tactics before you come here. We have the back simba dance, which you wouldn't like, to love to miss. When you come to Uganda, kindly ask someone to show you where you can watch the back simba dance. It's a dance that is followed by the rhythmic drums. The liberalized uh, transport industry that is uh, regulated, well regulated, border borders and taxi drivers. That's a boat ride for tourists enjoying on Lake Victoria. Massage spas uh, for relaxation the beach, beach life on Lake Victoria, then the bird watching in Tebe Botanical Gardens, the bo bicycle riding in Tebe Botanical Gardens, camping. Mm. If I may ask, yes. <coughs> you see what you're showing us, this information I can find on the internet. Yes. And now I want you to talk to me. I've seen all this on the internet. Now I want you to talk to me about coming to Uganda. Coming to Uganda is such you can try. Coming to Uganda is such an interesting thing. Like we said, wherever you see in Uganda, you will be amazed and wowed. We've talked of the chimpanzee sanctuary. It's one of the kind in East Africa. You won't find it anywhere. Olister. Yes. I can find chimpanzees probably in another country. Tell me something unique about Wakiso or Uganda that would want me to come to Uganda? Lake Victoria, the freshwater lake, is the biggest in Africa. You won't find it anywhere, especially with its freshwater fish that you won't find in any other place. Also, we have the Uganda matters, the story of the Uganda matters, mm -hmm. which is found in Wakiso, the museum. Wh what about the matters? This for the religious people who are religious. Uh, Let me give you a hint. We are tourists, right? What gets to people is when you either tell a story and the way you tell it, you tell it using a different tone. You tell it in such a way that I want to come. You get me from my presence here to that place that you're talking about in the story. You're selling. Use something. Use those, a few of those tactics. 
and sell Uganda. Okay, let's say, where have you been in all those things you're talking about? Where have you been? Like, person, where you have a personal experience? Namgongo. Tell us about your experience in Namgongo. The Uganda Mata Shrine in Namgongo. This is a historical site. Basically, uh, a historical site located in Namgongo for, for the Uganda Matas. These people were killed by one of the kings, Mwanga. They were in the struggle of uh, disseminating and spreading religion in Uganda. That is information on the internet. Your yes. experience, what happens when you get there? What? Namgongo attracts very many people all over the world in millions to come and attend the Matas Day on 3rd June. That so is what, what happens? Is. What happens? You want to? The, 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 the Namgongo Shrine on the Matas Day, so many people, so many people praying, faithful, religious faithful, so many eating, so much fun as people are praising their religion. You had some, some unique information that you offered. For example, when you started to talk about the fact that uh, people do, there's a lot of bargaining in, in the central, but so what? You know, you threw the nice information there, but you just left it hanging. You didn't drive the point home. Uh, you talked about the financial aspects, but just a little, touched it a little, and then, you know, talked about investment, which I wasn't too sure was relevant for a tourist. But the fact that, um, you know, there are no foreign exchange controls, that was probably a good thing, or the ease of transacting. I think the points were there, but the message wasn't driven home to, to help me understand why you're throwing around these points. Do you have a better idea of how to sell Uganda's tourism to the outside world? Well, pitch your idea in a one-minute video to this WhatsApp number. The top three best ideas will be put on the DFCU Bank's social media pages for people to vote. The best wins 400,000 shillings. Battle for cash. Battle for cash. Do you have a better idea of how to sell Uganda's tourism to the outside world? Well, pitch your idea in a one minute video to this WhatsApp number. The top three best ideas will be put on the DFCU Bank's social media pages for people to vote. The best wins 400,000 shillings. Elite Social Investment Club is up next. Being from Western Uganda, they are spoiled for choice on what to talk about. So, where will they focus? I'm very sure you know the task at hand. So the first thing I'll start with is the weather. At any time of the year, you can come to Western Uganda and you'll be able to visit any site. We have about seven national parks in, a, in an area of about 400 square kilometers or about four hours drive from one point to the other, which is unique. And in those national parks, once you reach there, there are certain things that you'll not see in other parks. You see the gorillas. The gorillas, you find that more than half of the gorillas are in Uganda. You'll be able to see them. You'll be able to see some bird species, which are endemic to Uganda only. They are not in any other place. You'll be able to see them. The national, when you reach the Mount, Mount Renzoli, Mount Renzoli, you'll be able to see the national park, the animals and the lake, but you can also hike. You can mountaineer. You move up the mountain if you are interested in that part. We have the crater lakes in that small area. Imagine an area, just one district of about 100 square kilometers where you have over 52 crater lakes. That one is unique in its, on its own. Then we have the friendly people, the rich culture in that area. You find that eh, once you reach there, you can be served with a smile. We look at the culture. There are so many kingdoms within that area, the Rensurur Kingdom, the Toro Kingdom, Bunyoro Kingdom. That one is also unique in its, on its own. We have the indigenous people. We have like the Batua people, which those are like the indigenous people of the forest. Up to now, they still prefer to live in the forest. That one alone is also unique, which you will not find in other areas. The taste and the, and the, the taste and organic local cuisine, you find that the food in the area is good enough. You will not find it in other areas. It is organic. There is, you can get like color, which you will not find in other areas. Then we have uh, 
the infrastructure is good. The nightlife, you'll be able to enjoy. Once you have toured the national parks, the nightlife is also very good. The health insurance, the infrastructure, you'll be able to move at any point within that area. Imagine if you are, like you are in Toro, you are able to, to use the pet name to greet. You will not find it any, in any other place where they use pet names to greet. That is also unique. We have the, the, the Ankole Kato. That, the longhorns, you will not find those longhorns anywhere else, which is also unique. It is good that you come to the, that part of, the, of, the, of Uganda to be able to see that. The infrastructure is very good. You can connect to all those sites. The security, you are assured of that. The banks, you can easily get the money if you are interested in the money. The health insurance is good. We have Lake Bunyonyi, the deepest lake you can get in Africa. It's a crater lake, wind impenetrable forest. The gorillas that I was talking about, accommodation is very good. The tea plantations, that green, you'll be able to, to, visit, to, to, to visit that place. Maragamam, in Maragamagambo forest, it is very good. That kind of scenery. Then we have the caves. What is unique about the caves is the myths, the local myths, what the local, the, the local people attach to those caves. Like the, the milk that is oozing out. For them, they call it milk. But it, geographically, you may explain it in a different way, but it's unique the way they explain it for them. The crater lakes, like I talked about them, you can find like two crater lakes being separated by just a road. This side is a crater lake, the other side is a crater lake. It is unique on its own. Then the, the uh, moving ahead, like the mountain, if you look at the Renzoli, the block mountain, the Renzoli, looking at that, you are able to, to hike, if you are interested in that part, to look at it up to the peak, snow-capped in East Africa. You may, you may experience as if you are in Europe, but it's in, in Uganda, near the equator. Mabere Ganyi Namuiru, we talked about that. The culture, the local myth, what is it you attached to that? It makes it unique. The way people explain it, the culture of the people, the royal tombs, the different kingdoms in that area, the, the value people attached to it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Elite. Great presentation. <coughs> Thank you. Loads of information, which is very good. However, I felt like you were you are like a leaflet. A leaflet gives you general information. And it will tell you either very good, excellent, and it will rate it. That's why I said, it, I, thought, I felt like it was an evaluation. Mm -hmm. However, because we are human beings, when you touch feelings, when you touch my imagination, then I start connecting with you. Sell and experience. <laughs> you see, uh, one thing that uh, is unique uh, with the western part of Uganda mm -hmm. is its rich history and tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the western part of Uganda is, the, is referred to the Interacastrian region. This is a region where it is believed the original people of Uganda, the, the, the Tembus, the original people of Uganda, uh, to have been originated. We have stories of the Chwezi. So the history of Uganda is actually not complete until you visit Western Uganda, until you talk about the issues of, of the Chwezi and the origins of. So the history of Uganda really begins with the Western part of Uganda. Can you give me your personal experience? Because I see you guys are elite. I agree to that. You have all the information. Now, I want to move. Yeah, uh, I have had a, a personal experience, me, myself, and uh, my family. Uh, we, we said, no, we cannot have this beauty around us, and we continue reading it on, on computers. So um, I think it was around 2010 when I decided to go and visit the, the Mueya Lodge uh, uh, in the Queen Elizabeth National Park. That's when I went and visited the uh, Lake Katwe, and I, uh, it was one, a good experience for me and, the, uh, and my family. Describe the good. I, I want the details. You, you know, know uh, one unique thing that uh, was standing out for me, you know, we, we studied history. Some of those things, the, the, 
the fault lines we used to study in history. When you go at Chambra, the Chambra Gorge, and you, you look down how that sharp thing is, this escarpment, it, it's something like a, a dream come true. We thought these things, we, 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 studied, we studied them only in history, but look, seeing that thing in reality, for me, uh, was a very nice experience. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, a, a friend of mine once told me that the truth lies not in the truth itself, but in the telling of the truth. And now I realize it because I'm, you, you took me to the Crater Lakes. I've actually been there, and they give an amazing experience. What Haman is telling you is that the way you explain this, the experience, and I'm quoting, and I'm quoting uh, Anne Verbatim, is that you are like a leaflet. The feeling has to, you have to touch someone's feelings because this is a person who probably has even, even never been to Africa and the picture they have of Africa is a war-torn continent, yet actually Africa has very good beauty. And, and, and the point we wanted to see in your presentation is help us understand that feeling and help us spark a decision for us to actually come and visit that particular place. You Thank ask. you very much. You're welcome. We will give you. Next to sell, also Central Uganda, is Akuna Mchezo, and their pitch is selling curiosity and a miracle. Hakuna Mchezo, you're welcome to this session. So you have five minutes to tell us why we should go to your region and not to any other regions starting now. We have various items that should not go unseen. We have the unique culture that is paying loyalty to the king in the form of bowing for men, kneeling for women, and when greeting by the inferiors to the superiors, which is something unique, which is not found somewhere else. Uh, two, we have cultural dances, which is accompanied by music from instruments which are made locally, that is, from wood, and they produce a nice sound that is attractive uh, to anyone. Hey. <laughs> uh, we have culture that is something which is unbelievable where you have somebody who can tell you a problem before you tell him kumpi <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Muganye? Temuzagala? Simba Muagala? What do you know? Take a good What do you 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 What so that's one of uh, the what to visit and see when it comes to the culture of Buganda. On top of that, we have the tourist sites which are very important, and one of it is the Kaswibi tombs, where the remains of befallen kings are kept, and keeps also the old regalia uh, of the kingdom, which is kept for years and decades, 
where even the grants can come and see there is a nice uh, tomb which is a must to see when you reach uh, Uganda. That's why when these tombs got burnt, UNESCO came up, the central government and the Uganda government to restore because it is very important. Two, we have the Namugongo Matters Shrines, uh, which is deemed to be very important when it comes to the belief of Christians. We believe that there are miracles, and there's nobody who doesn't want miracles. We want to live a good life. So we believe that the martyrs which were killed in 1886 have that impact of making miracles to whoever goes to that place. That's why every 3rd of June, every year, the numbers which visit Namugongo increases. Thank you very much. I loved the presentation. And actually, I don't know whether I got a, a mixed reaction, whether I want to go and see this judge or not, but it, it captured my interest. And that probably, that's the, um, you sold two things, a miracle and this other judge who says things that you have not yet talked about. However, you still have a lot of information. What would you sell? What is the one thing you'd sell to me as a tourist? One. So, the third item, that is the unique religious sites which are constructed on hills. Rubaga Cathedral is on a hill, and there's a road, Rubaga Road. There's Namirembe, it's on a hill. I Kibuli. There are many hills in other countries, and there are many other religious sites in other countries. What stands unique in Uganda? That's why you're asking why they are on hills. And that's why tourists have to come and find out why they're on hills. Even the Baha'i worship temple in Chevandu is on a hill. Mm -hmm. What is why on a hill? Mm -hmm. That's why the tourist has to come and find out why on a hill. That is a hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. That's why he has to come and So find you don't tell the tourists until the tourist arrives in Uganda. So, so basically what you're selling is curiosity, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Not just interest. <laughs> no further questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chila mika bietu koze, bivadeyo, kubate kubadeyo kumi tafu, chite giza, tucha kuto umuli. Chite wako koze, chite wako koze, chite wako koze, chite wako koze, kwe kusamira, kubanga tichikiri zikanti wa mutanizo kubuli ya chizibucho, nga tomu gambie, katuka bala ze, nituwa gama tuwa mzui ngoe singaba ze, obo mtu wa mulala, aso ulo kubuli lwa, katajitia kwa gano kuzula, kakodi yochi, uwa majikichi, alie mabega uwa mtu kubuli ya chizibucho, Ngatu chimu gambi, karifu chetu zanyesho, abala muzine wa gamba chetufu, enu ya kuna mchezo. The battle for cash contestants are all vying for 30 million or 20 million shillings, lots of other cash prizes as well. You two at home can also be a winner of up to 400,000 shillings. Let's have a look at our winner from last week. Battle for cash. Battle for cash. Last but certainly not least is the Cape of Good Hope, presenting Northern Uganda Tourism. Like. <laughs> hey, that was over scary, but I also liked. The floor is yours. The journey to northern Uganda is very enticing. Along the way, you're going to find beautiful scenery. Talk of Karuma Falls, Markshon Falls, which has endowed beautiful scenic features. Look at the falls. It's also a home 
for a variety of wild species. Talk of the elephants, the lions, a journey to the north is one that someone should never, ever miss out once you get to Uganda. Boy, oh boy. Talk about the hot springs. That's Amoro hot springs. It's rich with beautiful scenery. And the food? My, oh my. Finger licking good. Talk about Malakwang. Talk about Odi. Talk about, uh, you know, talk about Nino. Whereas Malakwang, it's made everyone change their perspective from test, t love at first test, not love at first sight. And the cultural dances will blow you away, such as the Larakaraka, which is done during courtship, where a, a man hopes, uh, shows his vigor, his energy, and hopes to go back home with a bride. Those are some of the intro instruments that are used, some of the cultural dances, as you can see. Wow, the traditional dishes that we're trying to tell you about. Finger licking dishes. That's not only dance. It's always dance too while going for war. So basically, uh, what you see are the warriors that are preparing for war. Now, what you see are some of the entertainment dances. This is Miel Bola. It's mostly for entertainment, entertaining the guests whenever the guests visit, like the tourists that could be watching this TV all over the country. Please come to Uganda, come to Northern Uganda. For once, I've seen guys who have represented Uganda. I like your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A great presentation. I just have one question I wanted to ask. So how much would it cost me to, to have the whole 360 view of northern Uganda that you tell me to enjoy? It's way more than pocket friendly, I must tell you. On average, from Entebbe Airport, I'm assuming you're, you're, you're from outside the country. From Entebbe Airport, it could cost you, to Gulu, for example, it could cost you about 35000 That's by bus. And there, the hotels are cheap on average. 25,000, 30,000, really great hotels. Whereas the food, the Malakwang, the Nino, wow, very pocket friendly. You talk about, about the um, food. About 10,000 a plate. You're you talking about the food. Yeah. But you don't tell me what is in the Malakwang. What? Because you see, the American with his bugger, he will tell you, wow. He will tell you, oh boy. He will tell you, finger licking. It's a bugger. So tell me about your food. Because the dance you showed me, you told me, so I really want to go to northern Uganda to see these dances. Because you described them. And you actually came dancing. But this food, while I'm there, what is in there? Okay, uh, specifically Malakwang. Mm -hmm. this is, uh, these are greens. Now, the way they're prepared is that they're boiled. First Use boiled. a tone that would want me to go and taste Malakwang. Thank you. That's, you just ran into my mind. <laughs> Malakwang. <laughs> wow. Finger licking good. Yeah. Now, Malakwang is a green. It's grown. And uh, trust me, the preparation process, pretty easy. You boil it for uh, up to around 30 minutes. And uh, all you have to do is mix it with uh, sim sim paste. That's uh, uh, what we call a D. And you're done. You, your, your meal is ready for consumption. Just like that. Thank you very much. We'll get back to you. Well, wow, this presentation was very marvelous. We enjoyed it and uh, we wowed the judges, basing on the reaction that the guest judge was showing. Just like to be successful, mm. it takes a lot of planning. Mm. And uh, we did plan a lot. Our, our team back at home, uh, the Cape of Good Hope members, did a lot of planning, they did a lot of research, and uh, we did the final touches yesterday. So it took us approximately, I uh, can say, four days to prepare, I must say. Well, I think the element of selling, one, it also resonates to you being knowledgeable about uh, the place you're going to sell. So for us being people from northern Uganda, and we have moved to most of these sites, we thought that was the easiest place for us to market to the rest of the world because explaining to someone who is very new to the country was easy for us. In this task, the contestants are selling Uganda's tourism to the world. 12 DFCU investment clubs are still in the running to win 30 million, 20 million, lots of cash prizes, a study tour to Nairobi, and a year of business advisory services from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Kawempe Police Women Poultry Group, Oyster Investment Club, Elite Social Investment Club, Akuna Mchezo, and Cape of Good Hope 
have presented their pictures of selling Uganda's tourism to the judges. Now, the judges call back the contestants for the results. Now, this has been interesting. I mean, we have a saying in tourism where you say tourism is everybody's business. And seeing you guys try to market Uganda, for me, it's very passionate. So thank you. You have all done your best. And because, uh, I mean, you gave what you know. Now, let me start with telling you what is tourism to us. Now, tourism is anything Ugandan. Why? Madame from Buganda, she's putting on Mbugo. Mbugo are made it from Buganda. Now, someone from Acholi, Alaka Laka, the boys are dancing Alaka Laka. Yes. Now, the Buganda person is going to want to know what is in Acholi. The Acholi person is going to want to know what is in Buganda. And that's how you start moving around. Now, why is the Muzum going to come to Uganda? It's because of Mbugo. Eh? Because of uh, Malakwang. Because of uh, the Crater Lakes. Because of uh, the Gorillas. So, anything Ugandan is tourism because it can attract someone to move from one part of Uganda to another or to come to Uganda. Now, but how do you market it? Now, these people, they have read over, over on the internet. They, have, they actually read books about what, but there's one thing they don't have. They don't have your local experience. The way Madame was selling Ruombo, I personally didn't know they, uh, there was uh, something in Ruombo is that thing you talked about? I didn't know. Because she does it. She has that local experience. Now, I would pay her for that. So, your local knowledge, the whites don't have it. And I'm glad you, most of you tried. And it was great. Though, of course, some of you, it's a competition. You know, some have to, one has to win, one has to lose. But the winner is tourism. The winner is Uganda. Thank you for investing effort for all that information that you gathered together. That was great. Cape of Good Hope, please step forward. Andy, please step forward. Mvara, please step forward. And Hakuna Muchezo. These four investment clubs, I would like to congratulate you. You did well. I want to go to the north to see the dancers. That's Cape of Good Hope. Cape of Good Hope. Mm -hmm. And you came all, you know. I want to eat Luombo and actually to learn how to do it. <laughs> and Hakuna Mchezo took me to a judge. Eh? That judge was real. <laughs> so, Yosef, go and enjoy yourself. So, the temperature is rising, right? Mm. China Sako, step forward. Agri investment, step forward. It's the elite and the oyster club. You did well, but you did not do very well, right? And just took us through what the four groups that just left us um, demonstrated to us. Uh, we felt you had the information, so you had a lot of information about your regions, about your districts. You were able to explain that information, but you didn't sell that information to us. So you're safe today. You may step off the stage. <coughs> It's jubilation for the investment clubs whose names have been mentioned. They're all safe and have moved a step closer to winning 30 million shillings. The Corporates Club, Yolwa Farmers, Kawempe Policewomen are the bottom clubs in this task. One of them has to leave the competition. When we're looking for the top 10, it gets down to serious business. This task was no easy task. You see, investment clubs are not just business. They are a revolution. A revolution that is going to cause the development of Uganda. So underlined there is the word Uganda. You had to be creative in telling this story to a potential tourist. And what happened is that Kawempe women, you actually pitched 
central Buganda, I, while you told a good story, it was flat. It only spoke to the, the head, and there was no edge around it. Okay? My brothers from Yorua, you actually pitched Tororo, but the very first picture you had on the first page of your PowerPoint presentation were Tororo headquarters. I'm not sure a tourist is actually interested in looking at the headquarters of Tororo. Brothers who pitched to Ntungamo and Western Uganda, the story is rich. It's only telling of her greatness. Disappointed as I am to say, I am from that land and you didn't sell very well. At this point in time, we look over and above what it is that you have said, but the teamwork, the dynamics, and I can say we could tell that you as the team were not united for a common front, and that was disappointing. Someone has to pay the price. Someone has to learn the lesson. So I'll call upon Kawempe. I'll call upon Kawempe. Tell us why we shouldn't send you home. The three are given one last fighting chance. Thank you so much. Uh, we pray that you will train us in this competition. We are learning a lot, which we didn't know. Please let us remain here and we continue learning until the end. Thank you very much. Today yourself. Thank you. Can't believe. But you need to go and get energies up. The two of you would have been packing your bags and going home based on your delivery of the exercise. It was short of our actual expectations and an injustice, in my humble opinion, to this lovely country. But we'll keep the context to the actual teams that delivered. That said, we want to say that Yolwa, you did give a presentation, yes, about Toro. Had a PowerPoint presentation that shows you actually prepared. But we did not see a lot coming from your other colleague. And I must say, Tim Yolwa, this is the end of the road. Great learnings for you. Thank you very much for the experience you've given us. And all the very best. Corporates, you may be into the top 10, but now more than ever, you need to bring your A game if you're to actually survive. Thank you very much. It's the end of the road for Iolua Farmers Investment Club, but the battle for cash continues next week. <laughs> <laughs>